Yep, it's almost summer, and you know what that means. It's time to get into the lead code grind, baby. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to pass your interview questions because you were not able to come up with a solution for edit distance on your own, even though it took a freaking Russian scientist to be developed in the first place. Anyways, we all know lead code. We've all heard about the constant grinding of solving millions and millions of problems just to get asked DFS for the 10th time. Me, personally, I'm not very good at lead code. I've only done a couple of questions. But hey, I like complaining and explaining stuff that I barely understand. So that's what I'll do today. Full disclaimer, I'm not going to go in depth into any topic. Topic, there's enough channels already that cover solutions way better than I could ever do it. So I just wanted to go over some basic data structure concepts and talk about some tips that help me feel not as lost when it comes to solving coding questions. Hopefully you'll find one or two things useful in this video. Or you won't, who knows, I'm not a freaking mind reader. Arrays are probably the simplest data structure there is in terms of implementation. We all know how it works. An array is a collection of items that can be accessed through their indexes. In most programming languages, indexes start at zero, looking at you, Lua. And if you try to access an index that it is outside of the bounds of the array, you will probably get an exception or an error depending on the language you use. That's not always the case in C though, because in C, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Now, due to the nature of arrays being simple, questions revolving around arrays are some of the most deranged shit you can encounter, especially if you just started solving coding questions. Take for instance the classic problem of rotating an array k times. How would you do it? Well, you would probably think, hmm, maybe if I just shift the elements one by one and then just repeat the same process k times, that could work, right? Well, wrong. Well, not wrong exactly, that works and that's what I did the first time, but what do you mean I can just reverse the whole array, then reverse the first k elements and then reverse the rest of the array to get the final result? What do you mean? That makes no sense. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but never in a million years I would have thought about it. So moral of the story, always look at other people's solutions. There's always somebody smarter than you. In my opinion, getting good at array problems involves just doing a bunch of them. There's many different things you can do and some of them are not as straightforward. One of my favorite examples is rotate image. Here, the key is to realize that in order to rotate the matrix, you can just rotate elements in groups of four and be careful with the indexes. I don't really know how to explain it, so I hope this drawing helps. It is always useful to remember that when it comes to arrays, the complexity is constant for access and all of them for search. Link lists. Some languages like Java come with linked lists already implemented, but if you're using something like C, then you have to implement it yourself, of course. What other option did you think there was? The way you do it is by declaring a node that has a value and a reference to the next node and the list. This allows you to iterate through the elements of the list by following the references of the nodes. Now you might be wondering, what happens if you want to go back? Well, sucks to suck, you can't do it. Unless you have a double linked list, which is pretty self-explanatory. Contrary to arrays, problems involving lists are a bit simpler in my opinion. Of course you can encounter pretty difficult examples, but most of what I've seen involves deleting or inserting nodes in the list. There are a bunch of techniques that you can use, such as using a dummy node or using multiple pointers to traverse the list, but it is very simple to extrapolate those solutions once you've done basic problems a few times. Now I'm not gonna go into detail on these techniques because, ahem, there are a ton of videos explaining them in detail and I'm too lazy to do it. A good problem to get started in this category is remove duplicates from sorted lists. The key here is to iterate through the list and check if the current node is equal to the next node. If it is, you just skip to the next node. Also, don't forget to free up the memory if you're using C. Hey you, yeah you, are you confused about data structures? Do algorithms make you want to cry? Well, oh boy, I've got the perfect solution for you. Let me introduce you to Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. See, I'm a very visual person. I need to draw and imagine things in a tangible way for me to understand them. That's why I like Brilliant. They have a bunch of interactive courses that will help you understand complex topics in a very intuitive way. They have courses on algorithms, data structures, math, logic, puzzles, and many other topics that will help you get started in the world of whatever my channel is about. It is also designed to be short, so you can do it in your free time. I know you have a lot of free time, you're watching this video after all. But if you don't, you can perfectly get around by doing 5 minutes a day. I usually just do it whenever I'm bored in the public transport. One of the courses that has caught my attention the most lately is this one called Thinking in Code. This is a fun course to develop your problem solving skills and learn how to think like a programmer. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash molds or click on the link in the description. You will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that said, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Stacks and queues are probably the most intuitive data structure you can encounter. Probably because everyone has waited in a fucking queue until losing their sanity or put a bunch of objects on top of their desktop hoping they would fall. So we all understand the concepts without much need of an explanation. If you've encountered these structures before, you are probably familiar with the LIFO and FIFO or whatever you call them concepts. FIFO or FIFO, how I call it, is usually used in reference to queues, where the first item that you queue is also the first item that you dequeue. Hence, first then, first out. LIFO or LIFO, on the other hand, is used in reference to stacks, where the first item that you push is the last item that you pop. 
and last then first out. Lifo and Fifo alongside Q, the Q and the push and pop are probably all you need to know to understand stacks and queues. For real, I don't know what else to explain. Now I actually have never solved a late code problem involving queues. However, I have used them in projects because, I don't know, they're super intuitive, I guess. I'm sure you get the idea. Most of its applications are very straightforward. Stacks, on the other hand, have applications that, if you've never seen before, might be quite eye-opening. Probably the most common example is the valid parentheses algorithm. In this problem, you iterate through a string containing any combinations of parentheses, and every time you see an opening parenthesis, you push it to the stack, and every time you see a closing parenthesis, you pop the stack and check if the parentheses match. If they do match, you continue. If they don't, you return false. And if you reach the end of the string and the stack is empty, you return true. Otherwise, return false. Simple, right? Well, what if I tell you that it's not that simple? I actually don't know about that. I still haven't encountered a problem that I couldn't solve with this approach. So let me know if you have any good examples. Trees are very scary, at least to me. They're also one of the most hated data structures according to a poll I had a few weeks ago. In computer science, a tree is a data structure that consists of many nodes and are connected in a parent-child relationship. A parent can have many children, but a child can only have one parent. Also, a child can be the parent of any of its ancestors. The thing that makes trees scary is that there are many different types of trees, and each one of them has their own set of rules. For instance, you have binary search trees, AVO trees, red-black trees, and many other bullshit types of trees. Not only that, some trees are what you call balanced trees, which means that the height of the left and right subtrees of every node differs by at most one. And each type of tree has a very specific way of balancing itself. See, in theory, I know how to balance different types of trees. Therefore, I should be able to code it, right? No, I have no fucking clue, to be honest. But do I care? Also no, because 90% of the time, I will probably get asked another DFS or BFS question. And those two represent two different ways of traversing through a tree. You either start from the root and explore as far as possible along each branch before backtracking, or you start from the root and explore all the neighboring nodes at the current depth before moving on to the next depth level. Based on my experience, two out of two times I got asked a tree question, it was related to DFS. And if my math doesn't fail me right now, that is at least 20%. And that checks out with whatever I've heard on the internet about it. So if you're just starting, don't worry about balancing trees and the different kinds of trees, just learn DFS and BFS and you should be fine at least to start. You can worry later about stupid shit like that. A good example of a tree problem is the classic maximum depth of a binary tree, where you need to use DFS to calculate, well, the maximum depth of a binary tree. Here you need to notice that the maximum depth of a binary tree will be given by the maximum depth of the left and right subtrees. So if we just traverse as far as possible along each branch using DFS, we're gonna be able to get the maximum depth of the whole tree. Graphs. Now that I think about it, I haven't actually done enough graph problems to remember anything substantial about them. So in order to stop me from giving you false information or just saying anything else stupid, I'm gonna stop the video right here. I don't think I have the energy to continue anyways. Six minutes, holy sh-